meds to treat some of the urinary tract disorders. You have in your literature a list of all the meds I need you to know. So if you can't see them well enough on the board, I will refer you to your book and then also to the um, document that has all your need to know meds in them. So spasmodic anti I'm against what are you against spasmodic spasms so these hold down spasms here we're talking about bladder spasms um, lots of times folks will have bladder spasms you know the gotta go gotta go gotta go right now uh, their bladder spasms because of several diseases will do that um, as well as um, other things that happen as we age. So, ditropan is the one the book wants you to know. Oxybutynin is the generic. So, it's an antispasmodic, which is also an anticholinergic. So, you're going to see the four great I can'ts. Okay, so I can't see, I can't pee, I can't spit, and I can't, and it rhymes with it. So that these will be the side effects to that. And then on the opposite of stopping a spasm would be starting a spasm. So if you have someone who is unable to start their stream, occasionally they'll give them a cholinergic. So this is the opposite of an anticholinergic. It's a cholinergic. And this would cause someone to get to have a bladder spasm in order to help them urinate. And this is going to be uracoline and the generic is bethanicol. Okay, so these are opposites. These are antagonistic. Moving on, an antibiotic therapy, um, anti-infective. It would be Bactrim and Macrobid are the two that um, they want you to know. These are antibiotics commonly used to treat UTIs or urinary tract infections, cystitis, which is a bladder infection. So um, they want you to know that with many um, anti-infectives used to treat urinary tract infections, that they can change the color of the urine, the appearance of urine. Several medications will do that, and you need to warn the resident of this, that their color of urine may change. Anywhere from a rust brown to a blue-green, believe it or not. So always um, in let your uh, resident know about that. Also, anytime someone has a UTI, we need to increase that fluid. That is something non-pharmacological that we need to do is increase their fluid intake, decrease the sugar intake. I like the cranberry caps with tons of water. I think it, if you can get them to drink it, right? But those are um, the best um, interventions that we can do regarding that. Okay, let's talk about diuretics. Diuretics, it's incredible. It could be one of the most common meds. So diuretics increase the amount of urine that your kidneys will make. Do they work in the bladder? No, they work in the kidneys. So as the blood is being pushed through that kidney, it's going to pull off excess amount of urine. Now, when it does that, potassium tends to go with it. It's kind of like that little sister you couldn't get rid of when you were young. You know, I had a little sister and anywhere I went, my mom would be like, take your sister, take your sister. And you know, it was just, I'd try and sneak out and she'd be right there with me. That's kind of the way it is with potassium and water. Wherever water goes, potassium's following it. So as it goes through the kidney and it's being forced out of the body, the potassium Potassium's hooked right with it and you urinate it out so you can get hypokalemia, low potassium, which is why folks take a potassium supplement when they're on most, most diuretics, especially the most common diuretic, which is a loop diuretic because it is, its action is in that loop of Henle in the nephron but it is Lasix, which the generic is furosemide. That is the most common um, 
diuretic that there is and it's very potassium wasting so you'll have to take a potassium replacement drug many of these cannot be crushed you need to read it because it'll say extended release long acting so you would not be able to crush it so be aware of that if it's one that can or cannot um, also then there is a, a potassium sparing diuretic most are way is a potassium pyronolactone um, also known as aldactone so spiro spares this is how I remember it see how that's a spiral so I remember it spiro spares so spironolactone spares potassium so let me ask you this if someone's been on Lasix for years and they decide to switch them over to spironolactone okay so they were on Lasix let's say 40 milligrams and they were also taking potassium okay of course because they're on Lasix so now they're switched over to spironolactone so Lasix is potassium wasting spironolactone is by is potassium sparing what do you think you might see if they forget to take the potassium off they're gonna have hyperkalemia right too much potassium in the bloodstream so when that Lasix came off, why that potassium would need to come off with it. And if they raise the Lasix, they should raise the potassium, unless the blood labs are coming back and telling us something different. But generally, they go in tandem. Okay, they go together up and down with the Lasix or the Fresamide and the potassium. Because remember, the body demands homeostasis balance. And one of those is with our electrolytes, and potassium is electrolyte. And if you want to know a sign and symptom of hypo or hyperkalemia, the answer will have muscle in it. Because potassium and muscle, so muscle cramping and weakness. If you have a Charlie horse, what does mom say? Go eat a banana. Because bananas are full of the potassium. Okay? So there you go. Um, Dehydration would be a side effect of any diuretic. Dehydration, because why do you take it? You're in fluid volume overload, right? The big puffy ankles, edema. So you take it and what if it works too well? Now you're the opposite, you have dehydration. Low blood pressure, because if you have dehydration, if you don't have enough volume, then your blood pressure will be low hypotension and then we always have to watch the potassium with any change in diuretic um, our, our dosages of the diuretic we always have to remember and keep in mind that potassium balance that's it hmm?